Alright guys and girls, I'm Obsidian Ant and welcome back to Elite Dangerous on the PlayStation 4. Now I've been flying around here in the extraction site for about 30 minutes or so and got a fair amount of bounty. This is for this week's community gold in Abrion, or Albrion, I'm not sure how you pronounce it. And I thought I'd make a video. So we've got the regular combat community gold here. There is a trade one, I'm going to keep getting into that as well. And we can have a look at how to find the trade products, the commodities that we're going to need for trading. I think it's something we've had a look at before, but why not have a look at it again? It's always worth checking these things out. Now, I'm also going to look at upgrading my ship. At the moment, I'm only uh, doing trading in a Cobra. It's got 32 units of cargo space. It's okay for starting out, but by this time I should be getting a little bit on a bit better than that. So it's time to move up to a Type 6 or perhaps something even a little bit better. For now, we're here in the combat zone and this of course is my Viper Mark III. The next thing to do will be to upgrade to a better combat ship, but I'll probably go for a Vulture next. And they are a significant outlay if you want to purchase the ship itself, which isn't too costly. But if you want to fully outfit it, then you're looking at quite a few million. And ideally I'd like that engineered as well, because a base that Vulture isn't anywhere near as manoeuvrable as I'd actually like it to be. So here we are then back at Campbell Horizons and we're going to hand in the uh, bounty vouchers that we just obtained. Uh, let's have a look first at the uh, mission board though just to get a bit of an idea of what's going on with the community goals here and just to see where they uh, both are. So the combat one there you can see I've already signed up not quite at tier 5 yet. Uh, let's Let's hand in the let's hand in the bounty voucher. So about half a million there, not too bad, but not perfect. I like to try and get to around about a million or two million, if at all possible, for these in a ship like this one. That's without spending absolutely hours there, which is something I would not do, but it's something I don't really have time to do either. So there we go. We're in the top seventy-five percent, was that two million, two and a half million? Not too bad, so that's going to hit tier th the next tier very soon, and we'll probably be in the three and a half million uh, bracket. Right, so next thing we want to do then is have a look at the trade community gold here. I'm going to sign up for it because you know, as you noticed just now, I'm not signed up for it currently, and we're going to need to know which commodities we actually need as well. Look, I'm jumping all over the place in these menus here, aren't I? Right, that's the one we want. Still very low on the tier. Pretty lowly rewards. But we're going to sign up for it. And we're going to see what we can do. So for this I'll be using my uh, Cobra. So let's have a look at this second community goal then. I'm going to jump back very quickly to the uh, the community goal board. So I can double check what, which commodities I actually want. And I'm doing that again, aren't I? On the wrong board. I'm going to go to the mission board and the community goal board. I'm not sure if I just said commodity board, perhaps that's why I clicked on the wrong thing. So which one is it? We want uh, the top one. That's coming on for tier 3 now, which is not too bad, is it? And uh, what do we need to locate? The Thargoids are active principally in the Pleiades Nebula, so we are eager to establish a research outpost there. As Edmund Mahon said, there is potentially a great deal we could learn from them. Hopefully, this new outpost will let us do just that. So we need to find lithium, semiconductors and energy grid assemblies. These can be used in construction. So where do we find them? We're going to very quickly jump on over to uh, eddb.io and we're going to have a look right there. So then, I've mentioned this website a few times before in previous videos. I think we even come here once before, but that was for outfitting a ship where we went to the stations uh, menu here. But this time, we want to go to commodities. Now, like I've said in the, uh, the game previously, in videos previously, you can use the in-game galaxy map to try and find out which products are coming from a which location and where best to go and find them. But it's a bit fiddly and it's not all that accurate. Much better to come here if you want accurate and up-to-date information that is very reliable. So we're going to click on commodities here and what we want, I'm going to look for semiconductors I think. We'll go and pick up a few of them. And they're here somewhere. 
in the list. I can't remember which category they're under. Pretty quicker for me just to uh, do a quick search. So industrial materials, semiconductors. So they're very low uh, value items here. Sometimes you're better off buying a slightly higher priced item because you can make a bit of profit off it during the run. But seeing as I've only got 32 uh, units of cargo space, or 32 tons of cargo space, we're going to go with something cheap. So semiconductors, current system. The current system is Abrion or Abroin. There we go. Do we want to include planetary landings? We can do. Not too fast. Do we want to buy them or sell them? We want to buy them. Landing pad, you'll want to select this depending on which ship type you've got. If you've got one of the larger ships, then you may want to say medium or large. Now, a ship like the Anaconda or the Type 9 can only land on large pads, so that's when you'd want to select this, because otherwise it's going to bring back outposts and you're not going to be able to land at those. And again, here for planetary, you can select no if you haven't got horizons. So let's find, and it'll tell us where we can go. Now, we want to look for something that's got a reasonable supply, because this was dated two hours ago, and it's quite likely that supply will have dried up by now. But down here, we've got uh, 4,300 units. And uh, that's 14 light years away and 103 light seconds away from the jumping part. So that's Corinda. So uh, that's where we're going to go. So uh, we know where we, need to, where we need to go now then. Not too far away. We should be able to make it in a relatively quick time. It's a planetary landing which does take up time. So personally, I prefer usually to try and uh, go for space-based outposts or stations because it saves a bit of time. You can just dock quickly and then head on back to wherever it was you're trying to get to. Just checking down what I wrote down a moment ago. Corinda. Oh, look at that. One jump away. Very, very quick. Okay, so let's just make sure we've got plenty of cargo space and I don't need to outfit anything different to this ship. 32 units, like I thought, and one jump. Time to head on over to the... I keep clicking on that commodities market. What is it with the commodities market today and me clicking there? Right, I'm going to head on over there and we'll catch you there in just a moment. Now, when you arrive in the system that you're actually flying to, you may find that will happen to you, what has just happened to me. And, well, there's no planets here coming up on my navigation location. And I can't find the station or the outpost that I actually want to dock at. And that's because my ship's computer knows very little about this particular system. It's automatically detected the uh, two outposts here, but it can't detect any planets. And the reason for that is because we need to do a scan of the system. So to do this, you can do it in two ways. You've got the basic discovery scanner, which comes with most ships. Uh, you may have removed it, or you may have upgraded it. If you have got it, then you just put it to a fire group. You can do that over here. I've got it on uh, Pinting 2, and right now we're going to activate that. And what this has got is a range of, I believe, 500 light seconds. And you just saw the orbit lines actually appear there in front of us. So that will have discovered a few stations for us, a few planets as well. Let's see if the one that we actually want is included in that it may be just because it doesn't actually come up by name it doesn't mean it's not actually there so this planet here is landable and there we can see is the base that we want to land at now if you haven't got a discovery scanner and you need to uh, do this you need to detect the planets that are in a system just fly up to the central star and I don't know if we can see it here. Hopefully, there should be a nav beacon in the system you're in. Yeah, here we've got a compromised nav beacon. These are actually very good to go into for combat, actually. So I'm going to remember this system. This is something I actually want to come back to. Perhaps we'll have a look at this in just a moment. But anyway, you'll go into the nav beacon, and there'll be a navigation beacon there. You can just select it and point your ship towards it. And after 30 seconds or so, you will get all the information from that nav beacon about this particular system, which will reveal all the planets to you and all the stations. 
We're going to head back to the compromised nav beacon in a bit. Let's go and get some bit of cargo first and make some progress on this community goal. Right, so here we are at the settlement on the planet then. And we're going to buy the commodities we're actually after, which was uh, semiconductors. They were under industrial materials, weren't they? As long as it wasn't superconductors I was meant to get. Hmm. Let's just double check. Uh, yep, semiconductors. Lithium, semiconductors and energy grid. Okay, we can get 32 of these. Okay, that's nice to know. Now, the other thing we're going to do very quickly is bring on over... Oh, we've got no shipyard here. Hmm, I was going to bring on over my uh, Viper here because I don't think it's got a jump range that's going to be capable of getting to this uh, particular system. Let's have a look on the system map and we'll see what services the other stations here have got. Maybe these have got shipyards. Doesn't look like it. Don't suppose there's any other stations here. Let's have a quick look. Oh, wrong menu. I'm going to go to Galaxy Map. I will say it's sell my data actually. What I'm trying to do is purchase the data, the planetary data, the system data for our current location. And we can do that from a station as well. We want this icon here. Purchase exploration data. Thank you. And now we can have a look at the system map again. We can see there's another base all the way over here. A bit further away than I would actually like. Is that the one? I don't think so. I guess it is. No. We can't land at that base then. Okay, well, there's no way of getting my Viper here via uh, transporting the ship itself. So we'll have a look when I get back to see whether or not we've got the jump range for it. The reason I want to bring the Viper here, of course, is to go into that compromised nav beacon. We'll do a little bit of combat there. And my Viper, my uh, Cobra here, rather is not combat ready. So here we are then back at Camp Belt Horizons, very nice uh, view here as we approach the station with the sun behind there and it gives you quite a feel for the fact that you've got to quite rotate as you're coming in. It makes the station's rotation very much apparent because you've got that point of reference, something you don't always get to see when you're actually docking. Landing pad 4 then, right over there at the back. So another thing that is worth having a look at in this system is the world that this station actually orbits. Abroin, Abroin 1 is actually quite a small world. Well, not that small by comparison to many others, but it's actually a potato type looking world. It's actually got roughly the same sort of size as many of the moons here, except this one's orbiting all on its own, so uh, probably a planetoid, I'd guess. But certainly worth having a look at, just due to its rather unusual shape. So let's hand in at these commodities. When you're handed in commodities for a community goal, it works just the same as when you're doing regular trading. You just hand it straight to the commodities market. And just make sure you're signed up to the community goal first, otherwise this won't be counted towards your contribution. So there we go. Very small profit there of 23 thousand credits only a single run unfortunately at the moment in my well, pretty small ship and <laughs> going back to commodities market again and let's have a look at what effect that's had for us on the community goal I'm fully expecting just to be in at the top 100% and there we go just 200,000 credits at the moment we're going to need to try and do a few more of those to try and get up to the top 75% at least and the combat one is coming along nicely. I've just unlocked tier 5. And I'm still in the top 75% there for the moment. Good stuff. I'm going to have a quick look at the shipyard here. Because obviously 
the Cobra is not very good when it comes to hauling cargo. It's okay for a starter ship, but you want one that can carry a bit more cargo. The hauler, probably not a good option for that. This is what we want, the uh, Type 6 transporter. Uh, I don't think I'm going to have enough money though to get this and outfit it. So you can see straight off the uh, straight off the shelf, it's got a reasonable ball amount of cargo, but we should be able to get that up quite a lot higher. So I'm going to have a very very quick look. Do keep in mind if you purchase a ship and then sell it, you lose a little bit on the cost of that ship, around about 10%, I believe. But it don't apply to modules. If you buy a module and then sell that module, you don't lose anything on that cost. So normally I'd want to do a whole load of different outfitting and try and increase the jump range of the ship here. And I'm going to need to do it a little bit because it's only 13 light years and once we're, or only 12 light years, and once we've outfitted this or once we've filled it out with some cargo, it's going to be even less. And you can see straight away we've got 50 units of cargo. But I'm not going to go and outfit this too much because the uh, reason I want it is for this particular community goal. And we know right next door the stations or the system is only just under 15 light years. So as long as we've got that when we're fully laden, then we're good to go. And I've got to say it unfortunately, and some people may not appreciate it, but I really do feel that the Type 6 is the most ugly ship in the game. Uh internal so very quickly actually we're going to need to try and upgrade the frameshift drive a little bit at least plenty of money to do that we could have always borrowed the frameshift drive from the cobra i do believe that's the same size but this is good uh, we'll exchange the old one we don't want that anymore and you can see we've got a nice chunky jump range now and let's get some better cargo racks so the four ones here we're going to swap them into the uh, size four slots there you go and that one I'm also going to swap into the size four slot okay the size threes can go we don't need those let's hope though that there's some size fives in stock of this station and yes there is we're in luck. We want one more of them. What else we got here? Planetary scanner. We want to keep the uh, shield, but I will go for another cargo rack in there. That doesn't make much difference. It's only another four units, but it all stacks up, doesn't it? Great, so there we go, a very quickly purchased and put together a ship for our, our community goal. A little bit of haulage there with 70 units of cargo space, not too bad. And very quickly then, before I get off heading out to uh, haul a load of material with the Type 6, we're going to switch to the Viper Mark III and see whether or not we can make it to the system that will just jump away with the uh, compromised nav beacon. If not, I'll show you a compromised nav beacon another time. There's plenty of them about, but often they involve you searching about unless you know the specific location. It just so happens I've come across one and it'd be nice to have a look. So there was the location, and you can see we've got no jump lines at all from here. Oh, well, we can go over to HIP 67109, but that's our only way out of this system. We're not going to get to that destination, unfortunately. Look, see, routing failed. So we need to get the jump range up on the uh, Viper here, unfortunately. Well, I was going to say, unfortunately, I think I've already got a good jump drive fitted but I don't think I have because I don't think I changed it from the default one no we've still got a 3E we've got a bit of money left so there we go that might just cut it 
There's always the possibility that we're still a little bit short, though. Yeah, look, 14.98. And what were we, 14.93 or something? 14.87. So let's see what we can swap out here to try and increase that just a little bit. I don't want to mess around too much with my ship here because it is a combat-ready ship. Or as much as I can actually get it that way. Right, if we change our life support, we can probably increase our jump range from that, assuming... Nope, assuming they had a 2D, that was. Unfortunately, they do not. I should probably improve my life support anyway. When your canopy gets blown out, they're quite handy to uh, have. So probably nothing here we can actually use to improve our jump range, anything beyond where it already is, unless we want to get rid of our uh, shield generator, which I certainly don't. Oh, look at that. Well, I'm going to get rid of the basic discovery scanner. It's wasted on a ship like this one. And now we can make it to the compromised nav beacon. In two jumps, it says. I don't know why we can't actually do it in one jump. Oh, because of the... Uh... Oh, we should be able to go directly there. It was only 14.98, wasn't it? There we go. Much better. Right then, I'll catch you there in just a moment. Now, a compromised nav beacon can actually be a bit of a challenge, and considering I'm not all that good at combat, we may not make it out of here. I might be going in, it might be a one-way trip, especially as soon as I haven't got a particularly brilliant ship to start with. But nonetheless, I think we'd all like to have a bit of a look. If you've not done one of these before, then you can come here to uh, this system. But there should be plenty of others around, especially at lo around the uh, start area. But I'm sure by now, most of you are way beyond the starting areas. So essentially, the way this works is the same as the hazardous extraction sites. This means that there's no security forces here, there's no police here. And when you come under fire, it doesn't matter whether you've got crimes reported against, report crimes against me switched on. You won't get any help. So here's a navigation beacon I was actually talking about and just skimmed that by the skin of my teeth there, didn't I? So, I'm not going to bother. Shall we bother? We don't actually need to bother. Uh, what you actually need to do is target that and point your ship at it. Scan it and it will, will, will reveal the planetary information here, or the system information. So what we're going to do then is have a very quick look around here. And uh, there is an elite cobra. It'd probably make quite short work of us. Although we could give it a try. And you can see there's plenty of wanted ships around here. So this one here is deadly. That one's deadly. I could probably take them on, but I'm not going to try it just yet. But what you'll notice immediately is that when you come in a compromised nav beacon, there's a lot of ships for you to actually take on. So they're a very, very good way of making a bit of money. I don't know if this guy's going to jump out. He's actually heading in the opposite direction to us, but we're going to try and catch up and then shoot at him. All these... Uh, ships seem to be looking for a juicy target for themselves. Pirates, most likely. Opportunists, who knows. But we're coming in to bounty hunt them. So, as yet, these, my ship is still not... Uh, engineered by any means and is actually coming straight towards us. We'd be much better off if we was behind him at this point. And I don't use flight assist off really. It's something you should use in combat because it does make a lot of difference. Something I'm not all that brilliant with when it comes to flying with that. I don't know why he's not shooting at us yet. There we go. Right, one thing you don't want to do is, unless you want to be at the target of hundreds of ships is to come to one of these locations with anything in your cargo hold because you'll soon find you have all the ships after you they zero right in on you and you'll pretty much have the entire compromised nav beacon after you before too long 
Although, of course, you can do that if that's exactly what you want to happen. This guy's got fairly tough hull, hasn't he? So again, not the best when it comes to combat, but it's still quite fun, isn't it? Although, oh, there we go, he's just shooting at us. Could probably put some pips into my shields here, or maybe into the engines just to come around a little bit faster. In fact, I'm going to put a little bit into the engines. I'm not worried about my shields because he's basically tickling them at best, isn't he, at the moment? There we go. <laughs> Took a lot longer than I would have liked. And there you go, 22,000 uh, bounty there. So not too bad. If you want to make a bit of money, then these are very good places to come to. And you can also get some materials here as well. Right, that's as good a place as any to leave it, I think, for today. I'll soon be back with some more videos. As always, thanks for watching. And I'll catch you guys and girls next time.